The Calls is an area and street near the River Eyre in the centre of Leeds. It is one of the oldest districts of the city, closely associated with its history and development. A number of the area's older buildings have recently been conserved, including some around a cobbled section of the road retaining its links with the past. The other, roughly 40% of the calls, now forms part of the inner loop road and has become a busy one-way thoroughfare for vehicles. But several of the old buildings in this area still remain. Buildings on the south side of the calls back onto the River Eyre and there have been strong links with businesses in the area and river transport for centuries. The district suffered from decline for many years, but it is now experiencing a revival. This video traces the history of the area and some of the people that have lived here. The Calls is located north of the River Eyre on the eastern edge of the city centre. The western end of the road begins at a junction with Call Lane, close to Leeds Bridge, and rises to slightly higher ground known as Warehouse Hill. The road then runs gently down to its eastern terminus at Crown Point, close to Crown Point Bridge. The route has been adapted to allow a new section called High Court to join it, but as we shall see, this isn't the first alteration that the calls have experienced. It is more than likely that the calls began life as a route from a ford across the River Eyre to St Peter's Church. The Leeds Minster was built in 1841, but there has been a church in the same location for over a thousand years. Some historians have suggested it takes its name from ancient calls, which was a path or causeway paved with flints called calcs. Others point to a translation that describes it as a place where cattle are driven, a cow gang. In addition, there is a dialect word, called, which means weir, and with the river so close, it has equal claim to its naming. This debate will no doubt continue, but as this map from 1725 shows, the existing name has been established for a long time. Identifying a road which ran from Leeds Bridge to the parish church, being surrounded at that time by quite a degree of open land. By 1770, even with the city of Leeds starting to grow, there was still a good degree of open land surrounding the calls, but this wouldn't be the case for long. Within a few years, the incredible growth of the city had begun and Leeds began to take advantage of its position for natural resources, trade and transport. The route of the calls remained roughly the same in each of these maps, connecting travellers to the parish church but by 1850, the route had been altered and extended. The construction of Crown Point Bridge in 1842 opened a new route to Hunslet and business south of the city. This section of the River Eyre had become an important place for bringing in and sending out goods, and the buildings and warehouses reflected this. Maps at the end of the Victorian period confirmed the role of the area in the industrial growth and development of the city, with warehouses, coal chutes and docks lining the river. The street directory for the calls in 1904 lists various merchants, corn millers and manufacturers of lamps, glass, ironwork and mineral water. The Calls had become a place of work for many people in the city. In such an industrial location, you may have expected to find few people living there overnight. However, that wasn't the case. This is the census for part of the Calls in 1901, and we see Furrier's warehouseman Richard Hodgkinson 
with his wife Lily and four children are living at number 16. There is also Joseph Townend and his family at number 36. The majority of the properties were uninhabited overnight, but closer to the parish church there were more people living on the calls, including clergy from the church, servants and school caretakers. The census provides valuable information about the occupations of the residents and particularly their places of birth. In fact, there were a high number of people living in the area. On the adjoining East Street and Wharf Street, there were numerous lodging houses offering accommodation to considerable numbers of working men. I found this census entry for lodgings on Wharf Street surprising. There are 26 older men lodging at just one property. Almost all of them are single and employed in labouring work. However, I found this was by no means unusual. There were other men in similar circumstances lodging in other properties on Wharf Street too. Here is another example where 27 men with ages ranging from 21 to 73 are living in one lodging house on Wharf Street. Their birthplaces show the range of places they have migrated from looking for work. Wharf Street is seen here in this photograph. On the right edge of the photo is the wall of the old brewery on the calls that remains today. To the left, Wharf Street heads towards Kergate. It is hard to imagine so many men lodging in the buildings with such confined conditions. Sanitation in these buildings was poor and one can imagine a rowdy existence with so many men living together and possibly drinking together in the numerous public houses close by. The census must include every person but not every one of them in the area were spending census night inside a building. At the moorings behind Warehouse Hill we find couples, sometimes with children, living in boats such as keels and sloops. The names of the vessels are included and they were used to transport goods up and down the river to the east coast. There are several vessels included on the next page of the census too. It must have been an unusual life spending time as a family transporting goods along the river. One of the boats is called a lighter, known simply as number 70. These were used to transport goods to and from moored ships. Living on board we see the master and his wife, their three-year-old son and a 24-year-old servant called the boat's mate. We can't tell if the lighter was working locally or transporting goods over a further distance, but it can't have been an easy existence for them living in such confined spaces. Today the river is more peaceful and with only the occasional craft moving along. It is hard to imagine the hustle and bustle that was once here. This photograph is from the end of the Victorian period. In the foreground, four men are employed in loading a barge. And in the centre background are two mechanical cranes used to unload the barges. This is an area of the riverside called Sparrows Wharf. Several of the buildings in the background remain today. As deindustrialization took place in the UK, areas such as the Calls became quieter. Many of the buildings were repurposed and as motorised transport grew, so the link between the Calls and the river declined. By the 1980s, the area was in serious decline and people disliked being around the district outside of daylight hours. Many of the buildings fell into a state of disrepair and plans were sometimes forwarded 
to replace the older buildings with new ones. Some buildings were lost, but some, thankfully, were saved. In the 1990s, council planners and developers started to look anew at the calls and surrounding areas. A new footbridge known to many as the Millennium Bridge was built between the calls and the new developments at Brewery Wharf on the south side of the river. This opened up the area to visitors and new residents in apartments that were being introduced. Increasingly, people were enjoying the riverside for leisure and amenity. Many buildings were finally conserved. The tall, seven-storey Sparrows Wharf building, a Grade II listed former warehouse dating from the early 19th century and numbered 30 to 34 the calls, was converted to residential apartments, with a bar at the ground floor level. The former Calls Landing Warehouse also underwent redevelopment, and next to it, the three gabled late 18th, early 19th century Fletland Mills became a hotel and restaurant named simply 42 The Calls. On the opposite side of the river, a new residential development would become Victoria Keys, surrounded by new apartment blocks, bars and restaurants. Life has returned to the calls and it has become an attractive area that people like to visit. It is also a useful connection to the heritage of Leeds. Much greater use is being made of the river for both recreation and, indeed, transport. As I researched to create this video, I discovered that 42 The Calls Hotel is currently closed for refurbishment into a new five-star experience with 37 suites. When it reopens, guests will be met with either a Rolls Royce or those arriving by train can opt to be picked up by the hotel's own boat and cruise along the river air arriving at the hotel and welcomed with a glass of champagne. It sounds positively Venetian and that is quite a turnaround for the area in such a short time. I wonder what some of the Calls inhabitants of the past would make of the Calls today.